Hi, I'm Ray Shevska, and I sold cars for 43 years, and I'm going to teach you how to get the best deal when it comes to buying your next car or truck. My son, Zach, and I started CarAge five years ago, and the reason for Deal School is to teach you how to get the best car deal possible when it's time to go shopping. Along with Deal School, we're providing a free ebook that you'll be able to download just by going to CarAge.com slash DealSchool. The link to that is in the description below, and well, let's get started. Deal School is broken up into 20 lessons. Lesson one is how the new car market has changed, because by Buying a car today is different than when we filmed Deal School two years ago. One of the things you have to keep in mind is that interest rates are finally starting to come down. The Fed just recently lowered the Fed rate, which will ultimately lead to lower retail rates for customers. Inventory levels are starting to build back up almost to the pre-pandemic levels. We are sitting at just under 3 million new vehicles available or in transit on a monthly basis. In the past, those numbers had been about three and a half million. So we're moving in the right direction to, as we'd like to say, to see the end of the seller's market and the beginning of the buyer's market. You have to remember that during the pandemic, inventory levels were as low as about eight to 900,000 vehicles. So we're nearly three times that number today. And Cox Automotive, the largest automotive data people in the world, have declared that the seller's market is dead. With increased inventories, we expect to see increased incentives, which should be able to bring those buyers who have been priced out of the market back into the market moving forward. Lesson two, let's talk about the used car market and how things have changed. The used car prices have come down dramatically from their all-time high, so we have seen used car prices dropping. However, we're also seeing a kind of steadiness to this, and, and they're not dropping uh, as fast or further than we would like to see. Also, interest rates, they're still high on the pre-owned side of things. Average interest rates on used cars today are approximately 14% on average. Hopefully, we'll see those percentage rates go down as we move forward. The other thing to keep in mind, uh, there are fewer and fewer lease returns available, down by about a million vehicles a year. That is going to impact the values of two- and three-year-old used cars. Those will remain at a premium price. Uh, the premiums will be paid by the dealers at the auctions. And, well, they're going to expect us as customers to pay that premium as well. Before you even think about buying a car, you have to think about what it is that you can afford, okay? So when we talk about what can I afford, I have what I call my 10% rule. And my 10% rule is simply this. You should not be spending more than 10% of your gross monthly earnings on your automobile. That has to include your car payment. That has to include insurance. That has to include your gas and maintenance as well. Let's say you make $5,000 a month. At $5,000 a month gross pay, 10% of that would be $500. You shouldn't spend more than $500 per month for your car payment, gas insurance, and maintenance. So if 500 is the magic number and your insurance is $100 a month, it means you have basically $400 a month that you can be putting towards your car payment. Now we have to figure out what $400 a month will buy you. What do I mean by that? Go to your local credit union or bank see how much money they would lend you to still have a payment of $400 a month. Let's say that number comes out to $20,000 that they, you can finance to be at $400 a month. And let's say you have $5,000 that you can put down in cash or trade equity. That means you can be looking at a vehicle that would cost no more than $25,000 including all fees, state taxes, sales tax, title, and registration. So you're probably going to have to look at a car that's about $22,500 plus fees. That'll take you up to about $25,000. With your $5,000 cash down, that's going to have you at a payment of about $400 a month. At CarEdge.com, you can get a breakdown of what all your monthly costs will be. Just go to CarEdge.com slash research, put in the vehicle that you're interested in, and you'll be able to compare it against other 
uh, makes and models. Lesson four is, is all about understanding your needs. You need to sit down and do a needs assessment as to how you're planning on using the car. Uh, are you planning on using it for business or pleasure? Uh, are you going to be carrying a lot of people? You need to take everything into consideration when you figure out what it is that you're going to buy. Remember, don't base it all on want, base it on need. That's why it's called a needs assessment. The dealership personnel that you're going, going to encounter, they're trained in doing a needs assessment. They're going to grill you to find out exactly how you're planning on using the vehicle. You need to know that before you go in so that you can concentrate on finding the right vehicle, not the one they want to put you into. Now, when it comes to EVs, um, EVs are a growing segment of the car business right, right now, and you might possibly be thinking about getting one. Here's things you need to think about. Will it be easy to charge? Are there charging stations near me? Can I uh, install a charger in my house or can I just use uh, regular electricity the way it's set up now? How you answer those questions will determine whether or not an EV would make sense for you today. If you do decide on an EV, decide on a lease, not a purchase because there's no vehicles that are depreciating faster than EVs at the moment. Now that you know the car that you want, first step, go to the manufacturer's website and build it, okay? When you build it, plug in your zip code and it'll ask you if you want to see what available inventory there is locally. See if there's a match. That way you'll know if there's any cars around that you want. Once you've found the vehicle that you want, go to the Car Edge car search and find the vehicle on our website. That'll give you some insights that, well, eventually you'll be able to use that information down the road when it comes to negotiating your car deal. Now let's talk about used cars. How are you going to find that perfect used car? Well, there's all kinds of search tools out there, and honestly, I would suggest you use them all. Once you've narrowed down the car, then I would suggest you go to the Car Edge website. We can share with you some insights that we have. Uh, what we feel would be a fair price, what the target discount might be. We can show you the information as to how long the vehicle's been on the dealer's lot and the price history of the vehicle, which will give you additional information for when it comes time to negotiate the deal. Now that you've found the car that you want, we're going to help you get prepared on how to contact the dealer. Here's the key. When you reach out to the dealer, you want to get information only on the out-the-door price. Don't let the dealer talk to you about down payment. Don't let the dealer talk to you about monthly payment. Concentrate on the out-the-door price. And the out-the-door price is the total selling price of the vehicle, including all fees and dealer-installed accessories. As if you were actually going to write a check, if you actually had one, um, you need to know what the amount of that check would be. So always concentrate on the out-the-door price when you're contacting the dealer. Now, when contacting the dealer, we recommend that you either contact them by phone or email initially. You don't want to go into the dealership until you have established through those communication lines your out-the-door price. Now, remember, for the out-the-door price, if you had a selling price of, say, $30,000 that you've agreed to, well, fees are typically about 10%. So $30,000 will suddenly become $33,000 with fees. So just always remember to add about 10% to whatever agreed upon price to get the total price. When you're ready to reach out to the dealer, don't forget to use the free Car Edge email templates. They'll help you tremendously. So who do you contact at the dealership? Ideally, you would contact the new car manager or used car manager, depending on what type of car you're looking at. But more than likely, you're going to end up with a salesperson. Now, here's a key. Here's a trick for you. How do you get to the right salesperson? Well, call the store. Get the receptionist on the line. Explain to the receptionist that your elderly mother will be coming in without you. What salesperson would she recommend that your mother see? Once you get that name, that's the salesperson you want to email if you're not going to be able to get through to a sales manager. Trust me, the receptionist knows who the good salespeople are, the ones that 
well, work well with customers, listen to their customers, and don't take advantage of their customers. And remember, on the Car Edge Car Search, we provide the dealer contact or a point of contact at the dealership when you're ready to reach out. Let's say you've narrowed down your car, there's three dealers in your area, and you're going to send an email to each one of those dealers. The reason for that is you want to pit one dealer against another. So you send out that first email explaining exactly what you want, that you want to get the out the door price, you want to know a total breakdown of all the fees, you give them your zip code so that there's no question about what taxes should be, and you expect to get that information. What will typically happen is you're going to get, hey, thanks for contacting me, when can you come in? At that point, there is another email template that we have available to you to say, hey, I've given you one chance. You're blowing it, kid. You're blowing it. So please give me your out the door number, the breakdown that I asked for, and you'll more than likely get responses from maybe one or two of those dealers. Once you have two dealers playing, you can then pit one against the other to work them to get the best price possible. So at first pass, Typically, salespeople like to take three attempts to try and get you to say yes on a car deal. The first pass, the first pencil, as they call it in the business, they're hoping you're going to say yes because that's the one where they make the most profit. You're not going to say yes. You're going to send back a counter offer. And the counter offer might be 5 to 10% below what they're asking for so that you can establish that we need to see some movement in price. Uh, once you've done that, then we can continue those negotiations back and forth until we reach an agreed upon number that works for everybody involved. When negotiating with the salesperson by email, be very specific. Explain to them exactly what you want, provide the exact vehicle that you want and your zip code so that they can figure out the exact taxes. There should be no questions as to what you're looking for. Now that you've got dealers involved, and, and let's say there are five dealers or three dealers in your area that have the type of car that you want, well, you're going to want to get all that information either via text or email so that you have a written record of it. The whole idea here is to get one dealer competing against another because when dealers compete, you win, okay? One dealer is going to want to beat the other dealer bad enough that they're going to give you the price that you want. And don't ever forget, you have the most leverage at the end of the month when the dealer is trying to hit their sales goal, which means start the process around the middle of the month so that you can close by the end of the month. With Car Edge Insights, you have all the inside information. You have the same information the dealer does. Flex your muscles. Let them know that you know what the invoice is, how many days the vehicle's been on the lot, what the incentives are for the customers. You let them know that you know as much as they know but always be respectful when you're doing it. And remember, the way to get the best price is to get dealers competing on the out-the-door price. I'm going to teach you the trick to getting the best price on a used car. Well, you need to know what the local market conditions are. How do you do that? Well, go to Black Book on Car Edge to find out what the vehicle's worth according to Black Book. Also, use our sell widget where you plug in the information for that vehicle and see what dealers in your area would pay for that vehicle if you were trying to sell it yourself. At least that way you can see what the spread between what a dealer will pay for it and what this other dealer might be asking for it. That could be valuable information when it comes time to negotiating the deal. Remember, no two used cars are the same, so it's not like you can pit one dealer against the other. What you can do, what you must do, is you need to understand how many days the vehicle's been on that dealer's lot. You need to look at the price history from when the, from when the dealer first listed the vehicle. Most dealerships have an aging policy for their pre-owned cars. No more than 90 days. Most are at 60 days. So if the vehicle's been on the lot for 67 days, you have more leverage. They need to get rid of it. Don't forget to get a pre-purchase inspection. You're entitled to do that. To find out if, if the vehicle is as advertised, make sure that the health of the vehicle is what you expect it to be. When you do that pre-purchase inspection, they find something wrong with it. You can use that as leverage to get an even better price. How do you know you got the best price? 
Well, see what other people have paid on that car. And you can see that data on CarEdge.com. We offer a concierge car buying service every single day. We update our website with the latest deals we've been able to negotiate for our customers. So you can see if you got a good deal or not. This lesson's about trade-ins. How do you know you're getting a fair deal on your trade-in? Remember, your trade-in is a separate transaction from the purchase of the other vehicle. So treat it as such. Negotiate the original vehicle first and then negotiate a value on your trade. Now, what do you need to do before you do that? You need to get some offers from other dealers in your area as to what they might pay for that. And the way to do that is to use the sell feature on CarEdge.com where in a matter of minutes, we can get you some competitive offers as to what dealers will pay for your vehicle. And you can use that information when you're negotiating at the dealership where you hope to buy the car. Just remember, when the dealer appraises your car, they're going to lowball you as to its value. And that's why it's so important to have multiple offers for your vehicle before you go into the dealership to negotiate the value of your trade. Don't forget that in most states, you get a tax savings for the trade-in value that you've been offered. Now, that trade-in value might be a little bit less than what the other offers were, but with the tax savings from trading it in, it could end up being worth more. We do have a, a guide, Trade-In Tactics for Success, back at CarEdge.com. That guide will, will explain to you which states have tax savings and which states don't. Don't forget that your trade-in is selling your car. So it's a separate transaction from the car you're buying. Always remember that. Two separate transactions. They're going to want to sell you their car for as much as they can. You're going to want to sell them your car for as much as you can. Okay, now that you've negotiated the deal, you want to retest drive the vehicle. I know you've already taken it for one test drive, but now say to the dealer, you know what? I'd like to take it for another test drive. And this time I want it to be a little longer. I want to make sure that I experience local travel. I want to make sure that I find a, a, a highway to get on. I, I want to try emergency braking, all those things on your test drive to confirm that you're going to buy the car. Don't forget that damn pre-purchase inspection must be done. You wouldn't buy a new home without getting a, a home inspection. You shouldn't buy a car without getting a pre-purchase inspection. Once all that is done, then you can complete your purchase. Don't forget your presence at the dealership is your greatest leverage. You've negotiated everything via email. Now that you're there, you can look at them in the eye and go, you know what? Another $500 off will seal the deal. Dealers are going to hate when you do that, but trust me, it's effective. They put in all this time, effort, and energy, and they don't want to now suddenly lose a deal that they were counting on. Okay, so you thought the whole thing was over, and guess what? You're in for another war. You're about to enter battle number two when you go into the finance and insurance office to complete your transaction. While you're in that finance office, you're going to want to review the purchase order. You're going to want to make sure all the numbers line up to what you had agreed to with the sales guy or gal or person. The finance manager's job is to try and sell you some protection products and, and to make additional profit for the dealership. Don't forget, finance office makes a huge chunk of profit at most dealerships. Now that you're in the finance office, you will have given your deal, the dealership your credit application so that they can run your credit to see exactly what type of interest rates you're going to qualify for. Remember, never give them your, your social security number or credit information until you've agreed upon a deal. Now, once you're in the finance office, you're going to want to say something smart like this. By the way, what was the buy rate that the bank approved my loan for? And the finance manager is going to look at you like, buy rate? How did you know about the buy rate? Have you spent time in the business? See if the finance person will share that buy rate with you. Just remember, the buy rate is what the bank approved you for. The sell rate is what the dealership marks it up to. So when you ask for the buy rate, you're, you're letting the finance manager know that there's normally a spread. And well, that you don't want to pay that spread. Now, if you've done everything correctly, you will have gotten a pre-approval from your local bank or credit union before you ever walked into a dealership so that you know 
what type of rate you should expect and what type of payment you should expect. Now, remember, by doing this, you'll be able to look at the finance manager and say, can you meet or beat the rate that I've already gotten? Sometimes your credit score is just a tad lower than you'd like it to be, and you can ask the finance person to apply for a tier bump to get you the better rate. Unfortunately, some of you out there are going to have fair or poor credit, and well, that, that means it's going to be difficult to qualify for a better rate. Sometimes a co-signer might be able to help that situation, uh, a co-signer with a higher credit score. Now, remember, if you use a co-signer, the co-signer is equally responsible for the loan as you are. So if you're not making the payments, the co-signer is going to be expected to make those payments. How can you improve your credit score? Uh, make more than the minimum payments. Um, double up on your payments, showing that you're you're more than willing to uh, to handle your credit obligations that you already have. So remember, get that pre-approval so you have some leverage. But realistically, at this stage of the game, there's not much that you can do. And remember, as rates come down, you can always think about refinancing in the future. And guess what? At CarEdge.com, we can help you with that. You always have the option of utilizing an outside lender, and all you need for that is a detailed buyer's order that you can share with the bank so they can then prepare the check. Just remember that dealers don't like when you use outside lenders or paying cash because they make less money, but it's your prerogative to do so. Now, if you're somebody that's going to pay cash for the vehicle, ask the dealership how they'd like you to do that. Will they accept a personal check? Do they want a certified check? Do they want a bank check of some kind? You need to discuss that with the finance manager so you know what form of payment to bring. Outside of financing itself, this is where they're going to try and sell you the protection packages that, well, you didn't know you needed. And the, and the way they accomplish this is through what they call menu selling. Menu selling is just a way to list all the various products they're going to try and sell you. But the thing that you need to remember is not how it impacts your payment, but how much they want to charge you for each item. Every one of these products is negotiable. Never forget that. One other thing you need to look out for is if the finance manager says to you, if you buy X, Y, and Z, I'll be able to lower your interest rate from 7% to 5%. That's called tied selling, ladies and gentlemen, and that is absolutely illegal. This is it, folks. This is literally the last step between you and your new car. There's a huge laundry list of of products that they're going to present to you. It could be gap insurance. It could be an extended vehicle service contract. It could be dent and ding. It could be lost key protection. Whatever it is, ask for a copy of each contract so you can see exactly what's covered and what it costs and how to cancel if need be. I understand we've gone through a lot today, and that's why we can provide you with our free ebook at CarEdge.com. The link to the ebook will be down below, and if you have any questions or comments, please share them there as well, and we'll try and get back to you. And if you like this content, and I don't know why you would, but well, I, I suppose you probably will, uh, like and subscribe, please.